Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with All Things Barbecue, and today I'm grilling up some bacon wrapped stuffed mushrooms on the Kamado Joe. Well, today we're gonna flip the script. We're gonna stuff the steak inside the mushroom, wrap it up in bacon, cook it on the grill, and we're gonna serve it with a really delicious blue cheese dressing. All right, so we've got a nice hot coal bed going here. Just gonna spread this out, try to integrate everything. And before we start grilling, we're actually gonna bank these to one side just so that we have a little bit of an indirect zone so that we can get some color on them and then move them to indirect cooking if we need to do so. And we're gonna get a skillet in here, a 12 inch skillet that we're going to be searing the steak in and then cooking our veggies in as well. Let's get started with the steak. We're starting with a ribeye here. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of oil, which is gonna make the rub stick. Now this rub is the uh, Santa Maria seasoning, uh, what we like to use on tri-tip as well. This is from Oak Ridge. Of course, we got some good black pepper, salt, some garlic, really basic steak seasoning flavors. You got about 400 degrees on the surface there. That should give us some nice color. We'll start with just a tablespoon of oil and we'll get our ribeye in there. Good sizzle, that's a good sign. Not too hot for sure. I say for now, let's leave the lid open. And that's just to make sure that we don't overcook our steak before we get a nice crust on the outside. All right, while that steak's cooking, we're gonna put together our blue cheese dressing. And this is a fantastic dressing for salads, for dips. I love to use it in all kinds of stuff. You can make variations add a little bit of cilantro or some uh, chipotle if you want a southwest version. But what we're doing today is fairly straightforward and maybe slightly centered toward New Year's Eve. All right, we're gonna start off with a cup of sour cream. Then we got four ounces of smoked blue cheese, one third cup mayonnaise, three tablespoons of buttermilk, a tablespoon of champagne vinegar, which is where we get our New Year's Eve touch. A half teaspoon of smoked paprika for a little extra smokiness. And last, about a tablespoon of minced garlic. So we're just gonna whisk all of this together. If you wanted this to be smooth, you would just do all of this in a food processor. Uh, if you want a little more texture, you can do it by hand. All right, I can tell you before I taste it, we're gonna need some salt and pepper. So we'll go ahead and add a little initially, give it a taste and see if we need to adjust that at all. And we are gonna use a little bit of smoked salt. We're going with that smoky flavor profile in here anyway. Good. Needs a little bit of salt, but otherwise we're really close. Oh yeah, that's really nice color. Give this a flip and let it continue to cook. All right, we got some nice char on here. We want that, we want that texture, we want that flavor. Internal temperature is at 130 now, which is perfect for ribeye. So we're gonna take that off and let it rest while we work on the mushrooms. Also, this skillet has tons of fond and flavor in it now, so we're not gonna get rid of that. We're actually gonna cook our veggies right in there. I've got about two pounds of Baby Bella mushrooms that we're gonna be working with today. Uh, they got a little bit of dirt on them, so we need to clean those up. But what we're trying to do is basically get rid of the stems, which this is gonna go into the filling, clean up the outsides, and scoop out the inside a little bit so it gives us a little more room to put our stuffing in there. So what I have here is just a damp paper towel. Uh, this way we don't get them super soggy by spraying them down with water and we can kind of brush off any dirt that's on there. And then we're just gonna pop out that stem, save that, and place that in the bowl here. Now this step isn't totally necessary, but hollowing these out does give you the opportunity to fill them up with a little bit more filling. 
uh, and that's the really good stuff, right? So um, don't worry that it looks a little jagged around here because we're actually going to wrap bacon over that and you'll never even see it. All right, our steak's cooked, our caps are prepped. Now we just gotta mix up the rest of those veggies for the filling and put it all together. I want about two cups of mushroom. Now this is the stuff that we scooped out. So that's about one cup and we'll get the rest out of the stems. All right, I just wanna chop this stuff down fairly fine, fairly uniform. And again, we're looking for two cups total. I think this is gonna get us the rest of the way there. All right, so next we have some red onion and I'm gonna mince up about one cup of this red onion. Now these mushrooms and onions, they've gotta get cooked down together before we can mix in the rest of the stuff. So we've put that skillet back in here. We're gonna add another tablespoon of oil and get these cooking down. I do wanna season them up with a little bit more of that Santa Maria. And we're going to cook these just until the onions are soft and translucent. Now while we wait on the onions and mushrooms to cook down, I'm going to dice up our ribeye. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this chewy stuff that uh, it does a good job to hold the steak together, these different muscles here while it's cooking, but we don't want to chew on it in the filling. So any of that, especially fatty or stringy stuff, we'll get rid of, and then we'll just dice up the meat itself. Obviously, we're filling a fairly tight space on these mushroom caps, so we're just gonna put the mince on the steak here to make sure that everything fits in there nicely. Let's not leave behind that delicious steak juice that's on the plate. That belongs in the mix. You can see I'm trying to work on the cooler half of the skillet because it is pretty hot over here next to the coals. These have been on for about 10 minutes and our onions are getting close. I would say we'll probably give them another two to three before we add some garlic. All right, I'm gonna to toss in a couple tablespoons of minced garlic, and we'll give this just one to two minutes to cook before we add some liquid to the skillet. Here's where we can get a little bit festive. We got some bubbles for New Year's Eve. We're gonna add this to the skillet, and we can actually let this reduce down to concentrate that wine flavor. I've chosen a brute for this recipe because it's got uh, really no sweetness to it, but a nice little bit of pear flavor. That's going to be subtle, but it is going to add some depth to our filling. As you can see, it only takes about one minute for this to reduce down to where there's almost nothing left in the skillet, which means that wine flavor is nice and concentrated. So this is ready to come off. We're going to throw it in the bowl with our steak and finish this off. Now to bind it all together, I'm gonna add a half cup of cream cheese. And in addition to the cream cheese binding our filling together, it's also gonna give us a nice, rich, creamy mouthfeel. All right, I'm gonna taste this, make sure it's where we want it to be before we get into the mushrooms, right? Mm. It's really nice, but I feel like we could punch it up a little bit if we add a little bit of heat. Maybe some uh, hot sauce would give us some vinegar, would give us some heat. Um, maybe touch below where I want the salt level to be, but I'm not worried about that because we are going to wrap these in bacon. So we're going to grab some hot sauce, get this mixed in, and start stuffing our mushrooms. I'm going with the 85% pain. This is totally gonna be up to your preference, but I wouldn't go very heavy on this. Uh, we do have a hotter hot sauce in this one that'll kick your butt, uh, but if you're up for the challenge, then go for it. So we'll make these just about even with the top of the caps, or I guess it's the bottom technically. 
but basically fill them to the brim. We are using a classic cut bacon because it's not as thick, which means it will render quicker and crisp faster on the grill. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stretch, make sure it makes it all the way around, pin it in place, and set it to the side. Now there's a number of ways that you can execute this part uh, as far as pinning these in place. Um, I've done these on skewers as well, which was a lot easier as far as flipping, but I found that the sides of the bacon, like right in here, wouldn't get cooked as well because that stuff was smashed together. So while it's a little bit more work as far as hands-on time goes, uh, I found it's beneficial to just handle them individually. So if you remember, we have a direct and an indirect zone on our grill today. And I wanna start out over the direct heat for sure to make sure we get the color we want on the bacon. We do want color on both sides, so we're gonna start these upside down. And as the cheese melts, we can flip them over so we don't lose our filling and brown the opposite side. Now I'm gonna close the lid so that the mushroom itself can start to soften as well while the outside is browning. So this is essentially about five minutes in. The bacon's just now wanting to release and you can see we're getting some great color on there. So we're ready to flip these over. Now if you're wondering temperature wise what we're at, in case you're cooking on a different type of grill, it's about 400 to 450 degrees when you close the door on this thing. So we could use some more color back here. I'm just gonna leave those for now. In fact, we're probably gonna need to rotate this row with these rows right here. Here's a good example of when it's not ready to turn. It's still attached to the grate. It doesn't wanna let go. You shouldn't have to do much coaxing when these are ready to flip. Boom, perfect color. You move that to indirect heat to let the mushroom continue to soften. We're gonna be finishing these to a feel. So where they get to the point where the mushroom is softened, this one is completely done. The color's great, nice and tender. But if we get in here on some of these thicker mushrooms, that's still pretty tough. Now you can do this by hand if you throw on a pair of cotton gloves with some nitriles on top. Otherwise, you're gonna be using tongs. It's a little tougher to tell the doneness with the tongs, but it's totally doable as well. With all that shuffling to make sure everything's browned evenly, I'd say total 15 to 20 minute cook time, which is probably, what, half the total prep time. So you're looking at about an hour and you've got this done start to finish, uh, which I think is not too bad if you're feeding a pretty good group. At this point, I just wanna dive in and get a taste of these things. This one's got my name on it. Oh man, that's just savory deliciousness. I'm a, I'm a little bit speechless. I'm trying to process all this. It kind of tastes like taking a bite of steak. I'm surprised how big the beef flavor is. I think that the umami of the mushroom really plays that up. The blue cheese dressing, always one of my favorites. Perfect complement for steak and mushrooms. I have to say that the brute flavor, that wine flavor, pretty subtle, but now we've got an open bottle of brute and it's almost New Year's Eve, so it's probably time to finish that off. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. Happy New Year, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.